Do you think people are trying to destabilise your leadership? I think many of your colleagues in the media are obsessed with me <laughs> and obsessed with my leadership and obsessed with the way that I was elected with a majority of over 60% of the votes and I would advise people instead of obsessing themselves with me to obsess themselves with the grotesque levels of inequality in this country. I'm here, I'm going on, of course I will. Out campaigning earlier, Jeremy Corbyn turned on those MPs, saying anything but hundreds more council seats would add up to failure, his failure. Stop speculating and get out campaigning is what I say to them. The people of this country have suffered enormous cuts in local government services because of what central government has done to them. We just had a budget put through that increases inequality within our society. And you will see off your critics and your I enemies. will carry out that mandate. That's why I was elected. I'm enjoying it, actually. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming along here today to launch this. Elections are about taking sides. Labour is on your side. This government has cut massively every local authority's budget all over the country. This government has taken £4 billion out of the adult social care budget. This government is underfunding our National Health Service. This government is presiding over a housing crisis that affects almost every family in the country, particularly the poorest families in inner city areas. As they refuse to regulate the private rented sector, do not give local authorities the chance to build houses. Indeed, instead of forcing those in high cost areas to sell off property that is desperately needed. They have presided over a budget that has uh, given to the very wealthiest and taken from the very poorest. They tried to take personal independence payments away from those with disabilities. They're taking £30 a week away from those on ESA with disabilities. This is a government that is widening the gap between the richest and the poorest. That allows four million children to live in poverty, up by half a million in the past five years. And news that's just come out of research done by city universities and city university and other institutes shows that for the first time since the 1870s, the life expectancy between the richest and the poorest isn't narrowing, it's widening. In other words, if you're poor, you have a shorter life expectancy. If you live in an inner city area, you have a shorter life expectancy. These elections on Thursday are about electing Labour councillors, and in London and other big cities, about electing Labour mayors. Labour mayors who will challenge the government, will try and bring us cleaner air and try and develop housing for the needs of all. But above all, it's an election about hope. Labour local authorities that do their best to defend communities. Labour voters that want something different, that want a government that cares for all, not for the few. Want a society where the gap between the richest and the poorest narrows, not widens. Where public services are for the benefit of all, not cut at the expense of the majority. That's why we're so determined to do the very best we can this Thursday in the elections, to elect Labour mayors and Labour councillors to stand up for the people of this country, not stand aside and allow the government to carry on with its policies of tax cuts for the wealthiest, charges and cuts for the very poorest. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming today. It's time, quite honestly, that many in the uh, golden, golden circle of the media establishment actually got out a bit and listened to what people were saying. Doesn't look worried, does he? But he should be. The smiles and show of unity hides the fact Jeremy Corbyn's facing mutiny among his MPs. Bad results in Thursday's elections and the trouble starts, especially if this prediction goes badly wrong. We're not going to lose seats. We're looking to gain seats where we can. Jeremy Corbyn's supporters will blame disloyalty for any failures. His enemies will lay the blame squarely on him. A lot depends on whether ordinary members are persuaded or not they chose the wrong man. And in the shadow cabinet, they tell me they're split. Some want to stage a leadership challenge, but only when they're sure they can win. Others are so disillusioned and are happy with life under present management, they want to stage a mutiny anyway. And they've raised large sums in donations ahead of the coming battle.